All right, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Scott. I'm here with my colleague Dash, and we'll walk you through some updates from Azure Monitor. So we're going to jump in over here. All right, we'll get this started up. So what we're going to talk about are some of the challenges with monitoring and troubleshooting modern cloud native applications. We've got a couple of updates from Azure Monitor. We're going to talk about health models, which just came out in a public preview. We've also got an investigate capability. So one of the things that's going on with uh, modern applications is the surface area of the whole area, with all the microservices and the amount of telemetry that it's putting out, becomes very unwieldy over time, um, which leads to fatigue and just understanding what's going on with the system, and then the troubleshooting process itself can become very complicated. So we've got a couple of updates that we're just bringing out the door. We're going to take a look at the first one here. And it's related to the health of your overall application. There's a new concept in Azure Monitor that we're going to take a look at. So some of these things are the dashboards people are using right now, whether it was an out, off the shelf or a custom one with Kathana or even an SLO dashboard, it still has some things that it doesn't address very well, particularly with troubleshooting. So with the health model, yes, in the we're going to take a holistic yes, approach to understand the overall health of your application and the various components in it. We've got a simple little legend at the top here that explains each of the health states that it can move through. And you've got a timeline view, so you can see how health propagates through the system. So what we're using to define the scope of an application is also a new uh, feature in Azure known as service groups. It was announced this week at Build, and that's what we've uh, defined our application with, is using a service group. And in this case, it was Contoso SG2. So when you create a health model, it's a resource in Azure. You're going to choose, um, you'll come in, you'll be able to navigate to it in the portal. You'll go through the basic creation steps like other resources here. You'll put it into a resource group and a subscription. You'll give it a name. You'll pick a region. But we need an identity so that we can uh, query the telemetry related to your application. We can either use the system assigned one or you can use a cust customer assigned one. Look. And this step here is how we discover the application. And this is where you're going to tell us which service group to take a look at. We're going to crawl that and we'll stay linked with it over time so we can be mindful of the changes. We'll also do default health signals for all the members in the service group based on the resource type. So you'll go through the create process, it'll be deployed, and out of the box, you're instantly going to have a health model for your service group and all the components in it, and that'll be updated over time. The other thing that you'll get with health is reduced alert noise. We bring all the signals up through and propagate it up to the overall application health, and that's when you start getting your notifications. We don't do it at every single level by default, you can come into the designer view and customize that if you want alerting at different levels within your health model. But by default, we squish all that noise down and give you a single alert up at the top. When you go in to customize it, you'll see things like what is severity you want to trigger it at. You can put your description in there. You can choose your action groups. You can do this at each of the different tiers in the health model. So now we've got uh, an example of when there is a, tro a problem with your workload. You will get that email, or you'll get a notification, you'll come into the portal, and you can navigate into your health model. And the first thing you'll see when you come into the overview is your health state is now shown as unhealthy, and you'll see when that happened in the timeline. You can navigate down into the timeline area itself to go into more detail. And what you see is this just recently happened. You've got an annotation there, so it tells you two health events happened. And we can zoom in on that, see which, what the events are, and then we can zoom in more to the particular time frame. What we see is the application itself is unhealthy, the bulk of the resources are fine, and one, the AKS cluster, was degraded. In this view, we can go into the details and try and understand what happened here. We can see that when it started, down at the bottom in the insights area, you can see there was a recent change, but it happened much earlier in the day, not really related to what we're seeing right now. Resource health looks fine. And on the signals area, we can see that the CPU is under some pressure, but it's not the reason that the service group or the application itself is unhealthy. So we can back out of this, and we'll go take a look at the service group itself. So this is where you can customize things. I've put signals directly on the application level at the service group that uses application insights. And I've defined criteria in here for a particular looking at application errors. This has crossed the threshold specifically and moved the overall application into unhealthy. So at this point, I can jump into my application insights data and do some manual troubleshooting, or we can use the new tools that we're talking about here, which is our AI Ops Investigate feature. Here we go, Dash. Oh, actually, let me summarize real quick. So what do you get out of this out of the box? You get an out of the box health model. We've got default criteria you can customize. We aggregate down alert noise, and we'll jump into the investigate feature. Try to catch up on time. 
All right. So as health indicated, there is a problem in the application layer. So sure enough, Joe, a DevOps engineer, has received an alert. Joe knows, though, that the application layer includes dozens of components, as well as their dependencies, such as storage, queues, caches, and databases. The underlying cause of an alert can be several layers removed from where the alert originated. That can take a long time and a lot of work to troubleshoot. So understandably, Joe isn't particularly thrilled about this, but she sees an option to investigate. She clicks through to see an investigation initiated in the Azure portal. Joe can also trigger the investigation from the alert details. Now, the investigation is contained in an issue. It's a new capability, kind of like a central case file, if you will. It is designed to structure and facilitate the collaborative troubleshooting process to troubleshoot service degradations. Now, uh, it is created automatically, and it consolidates all related observability data and tools and provides AI-powered investigation that detects anomalies across various data sources and across all layers of the stack. The investigation is run automatically and produces findings, each of which comes with a comprehensive AI-generated summary that helps understand what happened, why it happened, and how to fix it. Joe so follows the suggested step here to view perf diagnostics. She identifies the process that is causing the high CPU issue, terminates the process, restarts the machine, and marks the issue as mitigated. Now, in addition to going down the stack to find anomalies from the infrastructure layer, investigation goes broad for Joe to find the application layer anomalies across the various components in the ecosystem. It evaluates the metrics from these application components and surfaces those anomalies, all of those, at one place. Joe can deep dive into these metrics with a handy link right here. Joe can also get the anomalies over the logs from these application components. Investigation inspects the requests, dependencies, and exceptions from these application components and surfaces those anomalies, significantly reducing the haystack, so to speak, giving Joe a head start into troubleshooting the issue. Related alerts are brought into this issue, giving valuable context for Joe and anyone else working on this. Yeah. Investigation also follows Azure support best practices to find uh, additional diagnostic data based on abnormal telemetry. That's not all, though. Joe also gets insights into how the dependencies may have contributed to it. This database here is a dependency of this application component and is automatically scoped into this investigation. Azure Monitor automatically inspects this Cosmos database resource for anomalies in its platform metrics, which are surfaced here, as well as pulling in its resource health status so Joe can understand if it is indeed this database that is causing the problem. There you go. So as you saw, these AI-powered uh, Azure Monitor capabilities run a comprehensive analysis over all potential sources, starting from the infrastructure and following on to open telemetry-based distributed tracing with application insights to find the application components and the dependencies, along with the tools, all of its are consolidated into one issue to help SREs and DevOps engineers like Joe troubleshoot issues faster, regardless of their ambient complexities. Now, for these AI capabilities to be effective, though, having the right data, observability signals, metrics, logs, and traces is important. Right? Often, cost is a factor limiting the logs you're able to collect. Let's switch gears and take a quick look at how Azure Monitor helps you collect the, confidently collect the logs that you need to be successful. Azure Monitor Log Analytics is a powerful analytics platform built for democratized insights over petabytes of logs collected reliably while being enterprise ready, helping you meet your privacy, compliance, and security goals. It includes ingestion time transformation, so you only store what you need, as well as multiple plan options to suit your needs. Right? Uh, our strategy is to enable a singular solution for all your logging needs, whether it be your high-touch logs required for real-time monitoring, or those that you need occasionally to troubleshoot, or the ones that are low-touch required for your audit or compliance needs. 
all of these are generally available today and are at price points that help you collect all that you need to be successful together with the AI capabilities you saw earlier with investigation and issues. So with the same API, same query language, same consumption experience, we enable the collection of all your logs into one platform stored once to enable not just AI-powered observability, but also your audit and compliance needs. We're excited about the announcements here at Build for Log Analytics. Workspace, workspace replication for your BCDI needs is generally available. We have announced final grade access control and have also g the data deletion capability when you accidentally collect something that is sensitive. Right? We're also introducing a higher scale of results on the Azure portal, as well as simpler and faster log alerts, which help you get started easier and make the most of our offering. Back to you, Scott. Yep. Thank you, Dash. Mike, lightning. Yeah. So what we covered today on the demos is down at the bottom, we're using the service group concept to define the workloads. Um, as described in here, it's a low privilege uh, grouping mechanism. You can take a look at it now in preview. I've got a slide later that's got the QR code to sign up for that. On top of that, we're layering in health to help you manage your workload and your applications and move into troubleshooting faster. And then there's a handoff into Investigate itself, which it builds on that and crawls and moves you into triage um, to even more quickly troubleshoot issues here. So this is a call out for the service group announcement. Um, they've got a session, I believe, on Thursday um, that you can take a look at. The QR code there is how to join the preview to get into that. And then at the bottom, you've got a link to the session this week. Just want to call a thank you here. And then we can also, we've got another slide that has the uh, link into the um, deck. 